one is going to be over the, the older one. But in the, at that time, uh, he came about, he schemed his way into stealing his brother's birthright. And notice this, he fled the country because his brother got sick down him. And he said, I'm going to kill you, Jacob. Harry got sick at Jacob and said, I'm going to kill you. And, and so Jacob got afraid and he took off and he went out and he lived his life separate from the, the plan that God had for him. Now this morning, what I want to do is show you what it could be like to get into a fight with God. To, to, to see what God has for you, to, to actually hear what He might want for your life, and then to tell God, you know what, I, I want to do it differently, God. I'm going to go and do it my own way. And some of you might even be there today. God, I know what you want for my life. I know that you want a relationship with me, but I don't want that. And so you're struggling with God. Now, notice this. There's three things that I want you to share with you today about fighting with God. And the first one is this. When God picks a fight with me, usually it's because I need it. Now, write that down on your outline. When God picks a fight with me, usually it's because I need it. It's because I've said, God, I know more than you. You might be the creator of everything. You might exist. You might be out there somewhere, God. But I'm going to do it my way. And sometimes God will come to us in the middle of the night or on some day. And he'll say, look, it's on. Me and you, we're going to square off. And we're going to see uh, who is bigger and better and that. Jacob finds himself in this situation. For years he had gone off and did whatever he wanted. And then God comes into him one day and he says, Jacob... I want you to go back home. I want you to go back home because I'm going to fulfill this promise that I gave you. And you're going to see a little bit about that promise in a minute. I want you to go back home. But Jacob was afraid to do what God wanted him to do. Now, let me just ask the question. Have you ever been afraid to do what God wanted you to do? Maybe he's told you to do something in your life and you haven't wanted to do it because you've been fearful of what the consequences might be. And yet God tells Jacob, go back home. But he was afraid of his brother, right? Esau. He was back at home. And the last words that he heard his brother say right after he stole his birthright out from under him, he, said, he heard these words, I'm going to kill you. And he did not want to go back and have to fight with his brother. So God meets him in his darkest hour of despair. And in this passage, in this story in Genesis 32 and 33, Jacob is on his way home. And he hears that Esau is coming out to meet him. Not only is he coming out to meet him alone, he's got 400 men with him. And his brother is freaking out. My brother is coming to kill me and take everything and slaughter my family, all my kids, my wife. He's going to take everything from me. And, and he's worried and he's concerned and he's wondering if he heard right from God. Notice what it says. As he was alone in Genesis 32 uh, on your outline, it says, Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Now, I just want you to get this picture in your head. The Bible later on tells us who the identity of this man was. It was God. God in human flesh shows up and he wrestles with Jacob all night. And Jacob is trying to figure out, God, you said that you're going to do this in my life. And yet, God, I'm going to hold on to you and I'm going to wrestle you. And I want you to make sure that you are going to do what you have called me to do, Lord. Sometimes when God comes at us, I, I put a couple things down on your outline. You might want to fill this in. Uh, God wants me to learn something when God comes after us. Uh, when you find yourself up against God and you're wrestling, know this, that God is trying to teach you something. He's trying to show you something. And, and Jacob needed to hear that God could be trusted. I want you to notice this. As he's making his way back, he prays this prayer to God. And you can just feel the, the fear in his voice as he's, as he's expressing these words. Take a look at your outline. Notice what it says in verse 9 through 12. Jacob said, O oh God, my father... O oh God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, O oh Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your relatives, and I will prosper you. 
I am unworthy of all the loving kindness and of all the faithfulness which you have shown your servant. For, for with my staff only I crossed this Jordan and now I've become two companies. In fact, he divided his group. He said, if Esau comes against me, I'm going to send this group out first and, and, and hopefully he'll accept them. But he had divided his family. He, he, he didn't want them to all be wiped out. And he says, look, deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him. For he will come and attack me and the mothers with, with the children. For you said, I will surely prosper you and make your descendants as the, the sand of the sea, which is too great to be numbered. You see, his grandfather Abraham was given this promise, right? If you remember the story. Abraham was given this promise by God and God came to him and said, Look, Abraham, out of your family, out of your your descendants, I'm going to make this great nation and it's going to be the Jewish nation. And one day, one person is going to come that's going to bless all the nations of the world. And, you know, that person was Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ, he was a direct descendant of Abraham, of the Jewish line. And, and Jesus came to offer <laughs> eternal life to everybody, to, to be a blessing for the whole nations. And, and Jacob is saying, look, God, you told me that this blessing is going to come through me and my children, my family, and I'm very afraid that my brother is going to come and wipe me out. When God comes against us, and when we're wrestling with God, know that God wants to teach us something. There's a second thing that happens when, when we find ourselves wrestling with God. Notice this on your outline. When we find ourselves wrestling with God, we should know this. God doesn't want us to give up. God doesn't want you to give up. If you're coming head to head with God, God doesn't say, okay, uh, you know what? I'm going to forget about God. I'm going to forget about Jesus. I'm not going to go to church anymore. I'm just going to stop and do my own thing. No, when you're face to face with God and he's trying to teach you something about who he is or what he wants in your life, he doesn't want us to give up. Now, this happens so many times, and I just want you to think about this with me. Aren't there some problems that you wrestle with in life, and you're just tempted to give up and surrender? Have you ever been there? Yeah, I think we all have. Um, sometimes when, when you're trying to figure out what God's will is for your life, and you're tempted to just say, you know what, I'm just going to do whatever, God. You know, hopefully you'll be in that. Sometimes when you're, you have questions that just haunt you about God or what He wants for your life or your relationship, sometimes we wrestle with God because um, we want a blessing like Jacob did. I want you to notice this passage from Matthew. Jesus kind of reiterates this idea of not surrendering and not giving up when He tells us to pray like this. If you want to know how to pray, this is a good example of how to pray. Straight out of the words of the mouth of Jesus, He says this, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. You keep on seeking, and you will find. You keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For anyone who, everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. And so Jacob is wrestling with God all night. God, I want to know if you're going to keep your promise to me, Lord. I want to know if I can trust you. That might be your question to God today. When we find ourselves wrestling with God, it, it's probably because we need it. God's coming after us because He wants to do something amazing in our life. Notice number two on your outline. When, we, when God picks a fight with us, it could result in personal injury. I just want you to write that down. When God picks a fight with us, it could result in personal injury. Now, when I think about this guy, Jacob, wrestling with God all night, God's so much huger than him. All he had to do was say something, and now it's the end of the fight. But God allowed him to keep holding on, and to keep asking, and to keep knocking, and to keep seeking God's will in this area of his life. But the result was that it resulted in a personal injury of Jacob. I just want you to see what that looked like in Genesis 32, verse 25. Let's read this out loud together, okay? okay. Are you guys ready? Read. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's read this out loud. It says this. When he saw that he had not prevailed against him, he touched the socket of his thigh, 
so that Socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Pretty amazing thing to think about. He's in this wrestling 